is an issue of global significance, of, uh, of uh, immense urgency, and yet uh, why is it that the world cannot agree on what action to be taken, what action should be taken to arrest the changing climate. To discuss that, we have a very special panel with us uh, in our studio here in New York. Jie Bastida, teen climate activist, someone who's been at the forefront of the Fridays for Future campaign, a lead organizer, was also present at the United Nations when uh, the, the climate summit was held. Dr. Uh, Diarmid Campbell Lendrum, he's a coordinator of climate change and health at the World Health Organization. Welcome to the studio here in Beyond. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, you've been participating in all these protests. You spoke at, at or you, you participated at the event at the United Nations. What kind of response and support did you get at the world body? Uh, so, you know, we just organized the biggest global climate strike ever with over 4 million people striking around the world and 315,000 people striking in New York. And we did this on September 20th because we were going to have the Youth Climate Summit afterwards and the UN Climate Summit on Monday. And we really expected to see drastic action and something concrete come out of Saturday, the Youth Climate Summit. But we didn't see the kind of support that we wanted to see. We saw a lot of adults talking to us instead of talking with us. We didn't come out with a, a declaration or uh, something that was substantial. And so that's why we were expecting Monday to be the bigger summit. Mm -hmm. And you know, Greta Thunberg spoke and she said, how dare you do this to us? And she said, we are not going to stop. Change is here and change is coming. And I was present where a lot of prime ministers and presidents were speaking on the climate crisis. And I am very happy to see that a lot of them acknowledge what's going on. But I w we want to see action being taken. And we are here to say the youth are going to keep doing uh, their work on raising awareness um, and we just need you to act and that comes from actually passing legislation rather than only resolutions and declarations we want to see you know we just have very simple demands and uh, they are completely going to change the way in which we see the world but it's needed because it's our futures that are on the line you you're part of a very very important movement and and the world sees that but do you believe that well, leaders do not take these, these young climate activists like you seriously because of your age. You said that you were being told about how to use social media yes. more effectively uh, than, than any commitments on climate action. Yeah, so, you know, we were there and we were being taught how to use iMovie and how to make a video go viral. And for students who have thousands of followers on our Fridays for Future social media or our zero hour social media, we don't really need those skills anymore. Um, and so, you know, I was also present at, in Congress last week on Monday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday to talk to senators and, and congressmen. And it was a lot of them thanking us, thanking us for our leadership and saying, we need you to lead in this, we need you to, we need to follow you. And when that kind of language comes from our leaders, the most powerful people in the country and the world, we just see that they're not taking action. And so we are saying, we should not be here. You should be leading because that is your job. And we, you know, I'm gonna tell you our demands really fast, our national demands is uh, protect and restore 50% of biodiversity, respect indigenous land and sovereignty, um, adjust transition to 100% renewable energy, um, just kind of keep the fossil fuels in the ground and hold polluters accountable. So it's demands that we see are substantial for the movement and they need to happen as soon as possible because we are tired of missing school and we are tired of wanting to make uh, this change happen and only getting thanked for it instead of uh, they, them saying, okay, we're going to declare climate emergency right now um, and then do something about it. So, you know, the youth are not going to back down, but we need climate action and we need it fast. How old are you? I'm 17. So what made you think and decide one day that it's all right if I miss school and you said you like going to school and I will do this because these leaders are failing to deliver as you said it's their job and they're not doing it. So it's all right and I will, I will go and I will make my voice heard. What was that, that inflection point? So you know I, I was raised with the notion of you have to care for the earth because the earth takes care of you. I was raised in um, 
anatomy, indigenous culture, of reciprocity with the earth. And when the earth is being harmed and our rights are being uh, broken and just everything around us, our planet is warming up, there are wildfires, our world is, melt is melting and there's so many natural disasters that are exacerbated by the climate crisis. When these things are happening, school is not my first priority anymore if my voice is having a platform to be heard. And when I was actually called a climate activist, uh, that is when I stepped up and I said, yeah, I'm a climate justice activist and this is the, what, the work that I'm going to do. And it's uh, work of time, it's about time, it's about urgency, it's about us saying we have to do it right now. And my teachers are actually very supportive. Mm -hmm. I just need to make up all of my work. Uh, but we are out here and we're making our voices heard. Um, and if, you know, a platform like the UN is not going to allow us for that, we went to the media and we told them, you know, we were, want, we were expecting action and we got lessons on how to use iMovie. Dear Amit, would you call it collective failure? Uh, not just of individual governments or leaders, but the system as a whole, and the global system is what I'm talking about. This, uh, listening to her, to me it appears like one more wasted opportunity. Well, I think we have had a, a collective failure for, for a long time. Um, I've been involved in this issue for longer than I care to say. It's 20 years now I've been talking about climate change and the links between climate change and health. And our progress has been shamefully slow. And um, I know that the, the climate activists don't want to be thanked, but I'm going to say thank you, and then I'm going to get back to my day job. Because I think the message from the, the climate activists is, is very clear, that, yeah, don't patronise us by telling us how to make a, something go viral. Nothing has gone more viral, I would say, almost in human history than the climate strikes. In, I'm an infectious disease biologist by background. We talk about infection spreading from like the first case. In this case, you've gone from, from one case, from one striking uh, schoolgirl, to a, a global movement which has put millions on the streets uh, within a year. That is, must be the most successful mobilization, not only in the environmental movement, but probably out, outside of that. So as far as I'm concerned, the kids basically done their job and now it's passing the responsibility back to where it should be, the, the, the people who are you know, adults who are supposed to be taking responsibility for this. And I think we've, we've been slow, and part of the reason we have been so slow is that we've been talking about the issue as, uh, yes, as an environmental issue, and that's critically important. We've talked about it as a development issue, critically important. But we haven't talked about it enough as a human issue. And putting that human face on climate change, I think, is, is part of what needs to happen and is starting to happen. And that human face is basically people who are being made sick and ill from heat stress or the impacts of the wildfires or the impacts of um, uh, you know, changing infectious disease patterns. It's also the human face of, of kids who are made sick by air pollution. Mm. So around the world we have about 7 million deaths a year, every year from air pollution. It's as big as any health risk factor that we have. Here we have this beautiful backdrop here of New York. 7 million people is more or less the same number of people that, as, as live in New York. So we're talking about something that kills as many people as live in New York every year. And basically the same things which are causing air pollution are the same things which are driving uh, the climate crisis. So many of these things I I interact. So it's not just we have to save biodiversity, we have to save um, polar bears and so on, but really it's getting to the roots of the, of the systems which are polluting our, our planet, which is it's not only causing climate change, it's killing people now.